but we are going to be in Psalms 149. You've tuned in to Matt and Randy in the morning. We are here to encourage you in the words so that you can be strong in the faith and live victoriously in Christ. That's, that's where true victory is found. When you are in a right relationship with Jesus, with God Almighty, God the Father who dearly loves you. We may mess up at times, but you know what? The love of God is bigger than any of our messes. If in our hearts we are want to submit to Him, if in our hearts we truly are trying, the Lord knows that. You know, there's a difference between being wicked and being weak, W-E-A-K. Wicked wants nothing to do with God. Wicked says, I'm my own God. But weak says, oh, I want to do what's right with God, but I keep messing up. But God knows your heart. And just like Peter, when he was sinking in the water, and Jesus grabbed his hand and pulled him up. The same thing for you and for me. When we mess up, the Lord is there to help us. The prodigal son. The father was waiting for him to come back to his senses and realize everything he needed, everything he wanted was found at the father's house. And it is the same thing for you and for me. God Almighty, the God who made the heavens and the earth, the one who keeps everything in perfect order, dearly loves you. And he is preparing a place for those that will submit to him and realize how much he cares. This life has problems, yes, but oh, what a glorious place God is preparing for us. Like the old song says, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all get to heaven, when we get to sing and shout the victory. Praise God. Psalms 149 has to do with praising the Lord. It's one of those Psalms of Ascent right before the last Psalms. And it says, Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of saints. You know, we are to sing God a new song, a song from our heart. We are to assemble together and his praise in the assembly of the saints. It is so important to gather together with brothers and sisters in Christ and be able to praise the Lord in other countries, in Iran and places like that. People get arrested just for gathering together and praising the Lord. If you live in the United States, you have a freedom to worship God. Our soldiers have died for us to have this freedom. God has allowed you to be born in a country or to live in a country that you can freely worship him without fear of being arrested and put in jail because you're praising God Almighty. So we should praise the Lord. It said, let Israel rejoice in their maker. When you realize that God Almighty is your maker, that he is your creator, that he made you. The word in Psalms 139 says, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, before you were even born, God already knew you. What a privilege to have that chance to be born. Because if you're born, that means you have the chance to be called a son of God, a daughter of God, and enjoy the blessings that he has for eternity for his children. We have the breath of God. We are created in the image of God. Man will live forever, whether it is in hell or in heaven, glory with God. The choice is ours. Where we end up for eternity is up to us because a price has been paid for us to have a wonderful eternity through Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And believing is not meaning that you just believe that Jesus was alive and he walked around. But believing that he is who he said he is. That he is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And when you believe that, you will live your life in a way that honors him. Because you realize that's the most important one. 
to honor with your life. Everything else falls in place when you keep Christ in the proper place in your life. He needs to be the center of it all. Everything else will fall in its proper order. It says, let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. You see, that Jesus, God Almighty, Jehovah, Jehovah. You know, Israel knew that that was their God. That's who was supposed to be their king. Let them praise his name with a dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbal and the harp. Have you ever just praised and worshiped and danced before the Lord by yourself in your house? Has that praises of God ever stirred up inside of you so much that you just catch yourself just worshiping and dancing to the Lord? It is such an awesome thing to realize how much God loves you and that you are victorious in every situation because no one can overcome our God. He is greater than all. It goes on and says, For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He takes pleasure in his people. He takes pleasure in his children. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Oh, how beautiful is the salvation of the saints. Let the saints be joyful in glory and let them sing aloud on their beds. So not only do you sing to the Lord in the assembly when you're gathered with others, but let, let them sing aloud on their beds when you're by yourself. You can be in a hospital bed with a tube inside of you and in your spirit be worshiping the Lord and dancing. You see, this flesh of ours, it's just like clothes. One day it'll be gone. But our spirit, our soul, oh, that part of us can rejoice in the Lord no matter whether we are in a prison cell, in a hospital bed, in a household by yourself, bedridden. It, it does not matter we can still worship and praise the Lord. The Spirit of God Almighty resides inside of every believer. If we would just submit to that and allow the Spirit of the Lord to be that living water, that bread of life inside of us, if we hide His Word in our hearts so that we don't sin against Him, let this be the instructions for our life. Oh, your life would be so full of joy. There may be all kinds of issues happening around you, but that joy that's deep inside of you, that peace that's deep inside, nothing in this world can take away from you. That is a privilege of a child of God. Goes on and says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand. What does the Bible say is a two-edged sword? In Hebrews it talks about the Word of God being a two-edged sword. In Ephesians and Psalms 19.15, the Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. This Word of God and praises defeats the enemy. That's what Jesus used against Satan when the 40 days of temptation. He's the Word of God. It's what we use. This wonderful word that we are so privileged and so blessed to have. That's why we hide God's word in our heart. And that's why we do these mornings devotion. So, as it starts the psalm off 149, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. Doesn't matter how bad it may sound, God doesn't care what your voice sounds like. He cares about seeing that praise go up to him. It's all about worshiping our God and giving him the honor to his name. So keep a praise song in your heart. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. You do have a reason to rejoice. And you've got Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You are the victor, not the victim.